All right. Good morning, friends, and welcome to episode eight of Mindset Monday. I am super excited for today because today my plan is connect is to connect you to your clears. So I have been getting asked a lot about, you know, like spiritual connection. So I have been talking about connecting to your powerful self, connecting to your powerful mindset. Well, my friends, we're up in the level today. <laughs> so um, this actually couldn't come at a more perfect time because I've had uh, two or three people reach out actually asking about like, you know, if I offer sessions on like teaching people how to become a medium and things like that. And it's been in the back of my head uh, for a while as like my list of to do. So I figured no time like the present since I'm being asked about it to actually like move forward with it. So that's what today is all about. We're going to connect you to your clairs. What is a clair? Well, a clair is simply another um, sense. Like we have our five senses, right? And like there's the five senses show up in your clairs too. Um, but there's a big myth out there that like when you are a medium, when you connect to clairs, when you do any of this work, you just talk to dead people. That's it. <laughs> like you're connecting to dead people, you're talking to dead people, you're a freak because you talk to dead people. Well, guess what, friends? You're not, first of all. And I'm going to bust that myth because all a medium is, like the term medium came from the fact that you get to be this beautiful messenger between spirit of some sort and people that are physically present on earth with us. So it's an amazing, amazing thing to like improve a gift, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's a gift in that it's like sacred to certain people. Because let's be real, sorry, I have a like giant dog hair on my glasses. Everything, every single person who shows up Earthside has the ability to be able to do this. So it's a matter of um, practice and patience and maybe even a little bit of self-healing. And when you've done those things, your clairs can actually become really strong. So what I'm going to do today um, is go through and give you a little bit of information about each of those clairs. And the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like, you know, many people have natural strengths, right? It's, it's like that on this side, we have, oh, some people are better at other things than others are. Right. And so really having the knowledge to connect you to, um, all of the different clairs may open your eyes and it may make you have a deeper sense of like, oh shit, maybe I'm actually like, there's something to this and I'm a lot more gifted. I'll put that in quotations than I thought I was previously. So let's ground you into what Claire feels the strongest for you and um, see what we come up with. So there are four main ones that a lot of people talk about. The first one is clairvoyance and all Claire means as like a, uh, like a prefix is clear. So when we think of clairvoyance, we're thinking about clear seeing. And this is like the people who can see, who can see things physically. So there's two ways you can see. You can see with your physical eyes. It might show up as like orbs, shadows, um, sparkles of light, things like that. Or you can see with your mind's eye. So it could be in forms of visualization. You might have deja vu. It might show up through your dreams, right? A lot of times spirit will connect with us in our dreams because our logical mind is at rest and it allows that intuitive mind to connect a little bit deeper and be a little bit more open to receive. So you may have things show up as dreams as well. And clairvoyance is the one, like I, I definitely have this. And like when I'm connected with someone and I'm doing a reading of some sort or healing of some sort, like I will get images of that person. So their spirit team will talk to me and they will show me almost like a movie reel of like, this is what's happening. And it's not always like, as you know, laid out clearly as a movie would be, here's the plot, here's the like challenge, here's how you overcome it. It's not always that clear. It might just be snippets of pieces, but that's how they communicate with me, which is pretty cool. Um, number two, clear audience, which is clear hearing. So this could show up like it might be uh, someone else's voice, it might be your own voice, which gets really confusing. And this is like, this happened to me when I was first starting because I would hear things and it would be my voice talking to me, but it wasn't my ideas. 
it wasn't my like things that I normally think about. So I was like, where, like who, where, what is, what, what is happening right now? Um, but it could show up in other ways too. Like you might have, you might get ear ringing like really badly. And basically what happens when you connect to spirit, it's almost like a radio dial. So you have this like beacon above your head. Let's just pretend this invisible beacon of light above your head and spirit can see it. They can see whose light is brighter than others. Right. And so they'll tend to go towards the light and try to tune into your dial and say like you know pay attention to me pay attention to me like listen up and so they might do that you might hear ringing in your ears you might hear songs on the radio that really pique your interest or you might have a song come into your head out of friggin nowhere and it'll just be like on repeat it's one of those things where you can't get out of your head so if that happens to you if you experience that like Tune into it, listen to the words, because there might be a message in that, whether for, it's for you or for someone else. It's hard to say, but like getting used to tuning into that and recognizing that it's happening is, is really cool. Um, another thing that happens sometimes is that like you might be out, let's just pretend you're at the mall going to grab something and you're standing in line and you're waiting and you like actually like overhear someone else's conversation. Now think about this on a regular basis. We're surrounded by people a lot of time. Right. And we don't always tune into other people's conversations, but there are times where you might be near someone and like that conversation will be like crystal clear to you. Well, pay attention to that because that may be a way that spirit's trying to communicate something to you. It could be in the form of the topic. Maybe that's something that would be beneficial for you to pay attention to. Maybe it's in the form of a message that might be coming through for you from a crossed over loved one. Because when we connect as a medium, it doesn't mean we're just talking to dead people, my friends. There's tons of people that you can connect with. You can connect with an, an angelic realm that's full of angels, like uh, archangels, regular angels, all of those kind of things. You can connect with uh, like a guiding realm, wh which would be filled with like masters, um, teachers, ascended masters, um, guides of some sort, whether it's a business guide or a personal guide, you can connect with earth spirits or earth realms like elementals, fairies, gnomes, things like that, or you can connect with crossover loved ones. So there's many, and I mean, there's more, but there's, that gives you an idea. It's not just dead people that you're connecting with as a medium. It opens you up to this huge possibility of having this beautiful guidance system at your fingertips. So to pay attention, if any of you notice that that's something that's common for you, that you're ringing or like tuning into the songs or conversations. So that's number two, that clear, clear audience. Number three, clear sentience. This is a clear feeling. And, you know, this might happen in a physical form. Like you might get goosebumps when you walk through a certain area, or if you're driving, at night on a road and all of a sudden you get goosebumps, you may have passed through a spirit <laughs> or passed beside one, like it happens a lot. Um, you may notice that there's cold and hot spots. Like if, if you think your house is haunted, I'll put that in quotation marks. You may notice that there's cold and hot spots in your house, right? Um, you may get this like strong emotional feeling inside of you. Now there is another one I'm gonna talk about that's clear empathy, which also is clear emotion. So you may connect to those emotions, but that one's a little bit different than what I'm talking about. This is just a clear feeling inside of you. So like if you're connecting to those emotions and it's a clear emotion, for example, I'm going to give you a concrete one. When I have connected with people, I will get a feeling inside of me, a clear feeling of joy, of pride, of fear, of whatever. And so that's the emotion that I can feel as if it were my own. And it's very strong and it's very clear. And it's very undeniable. So that is different than the other one I'm going to talk about. So I just want to clarify that. Um, or you may get the feeling that someone's looking at you. I don't know if any of you have had that before, but it's, it's pretty crazy. Like I've connected with my grandmother who passed away when I was five. And like, I often will feel like she's staring at me from like the corner and I'll turn around <laughs> and be like, is that you Nana? I'm not sure. But so you might get that feeling that someone is like actually looking at you. Okay. Then let's move on to clear cognizance. This is a, this is a fun one, but also probably one of the most confusing because this is just a clear knowing you know without a shadow of a doubt whatever the information is but you have no idea how you know it 
It's just like this divine download that's been given to you. It may be information on a particular topic. It may be something that you know about someone. It could like, it could be anything, but just this clear knowing it's like that gut instinct, the gut feeling, or like a light bulb idea that comes seemingly out of left field. Um, some people may also call it a premonition, right? But you get that sense of just knowing undeniably that there is something there and that it's profound and that you know for sure that it's real but you don't know how you know so this one can be really confusing because people will often think like you're a nut job <laughs> and you know it's tricky because we are wired as humans to logically think about things right we're logically trained to look at the different things that are presented to us and when we experience something like clear cognizance where we're just given this sense of knowing it's hard to justify how that how we know that and like welcome to society we are like wired to justify everything right so those are the four main ones that most people will talk about when they're talking about Claire's but there are actually five more that um that can happen so I'm going to go through those ones too because sometimes you may only connect to one Claire and sometimes the four most common ones are not the ones that you connect with when you're initially starting. And I think it's important to bring awareness to that because everybody is unique and everybody's different, right? And if you can, if you listen to these four and you think, well, I've never experienced any of that, I must not have this ability. Well, just wait and see. So I'm gonna keep going. Clear salience, which is clear smelling. This one, my friends, is like crazy if you can experience it. So what that means is that like your insights come through in the, in the perception of a, of a scent, of a smell. So it may be something that you physically smell. Like it, it seems like you can actually smell smoke. You can actually smell cigarette smoke or you can actually smell a flower or it could be perceived in your mind's eye. Like if you're connected, you might smell your grandmother's perfume right? If she's trying to connect with you. So the scent isn't actually in your physical space. It's in your like mind smelling ability <laughs> that it's there. And like this happens, this happens a lot with crossover loved ones, mostly in my experience anyway, like take that with a grain of salt. Cause like, what the fuck do I know? I only know what I've experienced, but I have experienced this clear salience. It's not one of my stronger clairs, but I have experienced it before. And it's pretty cool actually, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we have Claire Gustin's and this one can be equally as crazy as the um, clear salience because clear gustance means that you're clear tasting. And, you know, this most often, again, in my experience, so take this with a grain of salt, in my experience, the clear tasting doesn't come from you physically putting something in your mouth and then like being connected and reminded of like whoever or whatever it is you're trying to connect with. A lot of times this will be a taste that you taste that is like placed there in your mind. So like I have connected with crossed over loved ones before for people and like I get a clear taste of blood and it's because they're trying to express something to me about like, you know, clarification about their death or things like that. So I have tasted blood before I've tasted like particular cookies before I've tasted, you know what I mean? And like, I'm not physically putting anything in my mouth. It's just that you, you do, you, you can experience exactly what it tastes like. And there's usually a message in that for you. Um, just checking out Amanda's comment here. I've experienced this one. It was, yeah, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. And how, like, how special is that to be able to like feel that after he's passed? I love that. That's so amazing. So Claire Gustin's is another way, the clear tasting that you can connect. Um, Clear tangency is clear touching. Um, RMTs, where are my RMTs at? Raise your hand if you are a massage therapist or even a Reiki practitioner. I know not always Reiki is like hands off, but it can be hands on. So anybody who is doing that like touch healing, which I'll put in quotations because many of you don't consider yourself healers, but let's be real. Um, but when you touch someone, when you physically touch them, you may have that just knowing like those messages will come through you'll connect with their spirits with their energy with their crossover loved ones with their guides and you'll get these informational pieces 
by actually physically touching them. So I had a conversation with one of my lifelong friends yesterday and she was actually expressing this. So um, Ava, I hope you see this. I may actually tag you in it because I want you to know like this is a real thing. And so this could be one of your gifts is that when you physically touch someone, that's how you're gonna get your messages to connect with them and their crossover loved ones or spirits, guides, whatever of some sort, right? So it's pretty cool. That's another a cool way to connect. Then we have clear empathy. So this was the one that I was speaking about. Remember before I said like that clear feeling is that sometimes you experience the emotions. Well, clear empathy is similar. Many of us who have these things, who are highly sensitive, are empaths. It's about 20% of the population that are true empaths that can literally feel other people's emotions and that like really, really, um, kind of affect us deeply when we have that exchange and that feeling of, of someone else's emotions. So when you are, when a clear, where clear empathy is one of your clairs, um, it's, you know, I'll say tricky in that it's, it's, it's not just connecting and feeling someone else's emotions, because as an empath, usually we're in a physical space with that person. Clear empathy happens when you are nowhere near anybody. So you might be at home and like you might get a feeling, a deep rooted emotional feeling about someone who could be on the other side of the world, right? But like, you know, you are experiencing the emotions that they're experiencing in real time. And that may, that may trigger you. So like, if this is someone, you know, I'm saying like maybe a family member or some sort, it may trigger you to like reach out to them and say, Hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? And that could snowball a conversation. And so like this, a lot of times, like, you know, people will talk about being psychic and like being able to like predict the future or see things. And don't get me wrong. I feel there's people that can do that too, but this could be one of the ways that like mediumship gets misconstrued for psychic abilities, right? Because you can kind of like, it's this foresight of being able, not even foresight. It may be, it may be foresight in that you experience the emotion before that person does, right? Like you're going to have a really hard time next week because there's going to be something happen that's going to make you feel blah, 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 blah insert whatever it is right and so you may have that ability which is the common psychic or what we think of a psychic being I love it I love it um so this one is really good and it, I mean it's really good in that it's a deep a deep-seated feeling in you but it also can be confusing because sometimes we feel these emotions and then we question like is this mine or is this someone else's? And then we hang on to things that no longer, that don't serve us. I shouldn't say no longer because they're not ours to begin with, right? And it, and then it, it plays with our head. So if you are in tune, if you know that this is something that happens to you often, really tune in and think about that because you can ask yourself, like, is this mine or does it belong to someone else? And I think if you really truly tune into that and connect with it, if you'll get a yes or no answer for that and just trust whatever comes through. So if it's a no, if it's a no to this is not mine, feel free to release that feeling if you are not in a place where you want to connect and figure out who it's for. Okay. I'll just add that little tidbit in there. And then the last one I want to mention is this um, clear intellect. And this is clear thinking. So again, we've got, you know, the clear knowing. This is a little bit different, though. This is when it's like, it feels like your thoughts. So you have a thought in your head, it feels like yours, but it feels like it's coming from, it's almost like it's been planted there by like some higher source, right? And so it could, it could be in the form of like your intuition. You may, you may think of it as like, oh, this is my intuition talking to me, right? But it happens a lot. So if you have this clear and you are well-versed in it, it's going to happen a lot to you. And a lot of times people who are like left brain, brain, very logical thinkers, this will be a way that their clear will come through because a lot of times people who are very, very um, logically minded are not as open-minded to the idea of there being something more. They want those like hard and cold facts in front of them and scientific proof about this is how it's going to work, right? And this is what makes sense logically based on the evidence, based on the research, based on all of the things, right? And so they may get these, these premonitions quite often because it's a way for this other side, the spirit world, the higher divine source to be speaking to them that will make sense to them. So 
I hope some of this has been helpful to you guys in being able to see what Claire you connect with the, the deepest. And I just like to let you know that I am working on something that will actually, you know, really deepen and connect you to the, to your clear and your abilities a little bit further. And I'm hoping to have a program out very soon. Um, two programs, actually one that would be self-paced and a kind of a low ticket offer where you can purchase a program and work through it at your own pace given the information of like, these are some exercises that you can do to strengthen it. Because like I said, in the beginning, practice patience and self-healing are three really good, like ways to improve your clairs and improve your connection. So keep that in mind. It's coming up. Watch for it. If you don't follow me, make sure you do, because some of you may be seeing this on my YouTube channel. So make sure you follow me, The Connected Mind on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook, just Catherine Rickert, or uh, in our beautiful tribe where I'm also live streaming this, The Connected Female on Facebook, The Connected Female Tribe, I should say on Facebook. So have a follow, watch for that if it's something that you're interested in, because like I said, there will be a self-paced version, but I'm also planning on doing an in-person, in-person over Zoom, where you have the ability to actually practice with other humans and connect and grow your ability. So thank you for being with me today. I truly appreciate you guys and the energy and space that you share with me on a regular basis. It makes my heart so happy and so grateful to be able to connect with all of you guys. So thank you for that. And I hope you have the most beautiful week ahead. We'll catch you again soon as I end on all of the devices.